Hello friends and assalamu alaikum. It's XD time again and uh, what we have in plate is colors and buttons so let's get started. If you watched my last XD video we spoke about text and uh, how to adjust it on XD. I also shared the free UI kit with you something that you could use to place buttons to your text today. In all likelihood, once you get a UI UX task, the clients usually have their themes or color preferences. So as a designer, you need to stick to them, which is why it's always better to have a color swatch ready with your client's colors so that you could efficiently work with them and you do not have to keep looking for them or borrowing them using the eyedropper tool. So the best way to create a color swatch is to click on the fill option on the right to reveal the color palette. So suppose the blue color that you see on the menu bar is a color specified by your client. Have it selected. Uh, all we need to do is click on the plus button here and it will be added to your swatch. Simple, isn't it? For simplicity, let's also add white and black as our colors. We'll need to take our cursor to the extreme top left corner for white and uh, extreme bottom left corner for black. We'll need them for text and other places as well. So it's always better to have them in our swatch. Once they are added, let's click on our blue swatch to get our color back. You see the panel on the right that looks like a thermometer. It's there to adjust the opacity of the color, so drag it up and down to increase and decrease the opacity. Similarly, the colorful thermometer that's sitting just next to it is to change the color family and uh, then pick the color of your choice using the circle pin pointer. If you have a good understanding of the color codes or have a source from where you can pick color codes and use them, there is a possibility of that as well. There is also an eyedropper tool to pick colors from, so if you have an image and you're not sure about the color combination, you can always use the eyedropper tool and hover over your image or whatever source you might have and click on the color to borrow it. Let's get our blue color back for the menu bar. Our border color is gray, so let's add that as well to our color swatch. Let's delete the text we have on the document and grab the rectangle tool to make a rectangle. So basically, we're going to divide the web page into four or five different parts. And these rectangles are the different parts of the web page that will eventually link to relevant artboards in one of the upcoming videos. And I think we don't want the background layout color. So let's just remove it. We can either remove it by double clicking on the home page text on the top left and then uncheck the layout option on the right. Or we can even double click on one of the corners of the artboard and uncheck the layout option. In fact, we can also go to view and select hide layout grid and the layout grid will vanish in thin air. You can even note down the shortcuts to hide layout which is shift command and apostrophe on a Mac or shift control apostrophe on a PC. Now I want to lock my rectangle and to do that I can go to object and select lock from there. You can see the shortcut is command L on a Mac and control L on a PC. I can even select the rectangle and right click and from the drop down select lock and it will be locked. Once it's locked you'll find a tiny lock appearing on the top left corner that signifies that it is locked. So to unlock it, just click on the lock icon once and free it will be. I'll grab the text tool and add some text to the rectangle, which is also called the hero box or the highlights box or the header, whatever you may call it. Usually on a website, the front page has the hero box where you get to see sales promotions, coupon codes, new arrivals and other marketing messages. Uh, since my text is white, it's not visible on a white background, so let me change it to black. And you must have noticed how our color swatch is helping us because each time we need these common colors, we now don't have to drag the pinpointer or look anywhere to match the color combinations, etc. We are very easily picking our colors from a custom made 100% reliable swatch. I'll also change the font to Humanist Light 
Particularly when we are low fidelity wireframing, it's always better to stick to fewer fonts and fewer colors, something that can later be changed in high fidelity if required. Using the Align option on the top right, let's center align our text as it's time to make a button. Now either you can go to the UI kit I gave you in one of my earlier videos and import a button from there, or you can easily make one using the rectangle tool. So let's grab the rectangle tool and click drag to make a rectangle. For the ones who've missed my earlier XD videos, I'll be sharing the link to the free UI kit in the description. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, you can do so now. Okay, let's add a red fill to our button here and then right click on our text and select bring to front. The shortcut being a shift command and a right bracket. And I think we'll have to turn one notch up to the font. So select Humanist BT, which is slightly thicker than the earlier one. And let's also change the font color to white as black text on a red background won't be easily visible. I'm going to place the text on the red button and center align it vertically and horizontally from the align panel on the top right. Now usually clickable buttons are not sharp edged so to round the corners we have two options. Either we go to the panel on the right and click on this round corner button. There are two actually. One is same radius for all the corners and the other one can have different radius corners depending upon the requirement. So if I type in say four for each corner this is how the button would look. Or let's make them zero back again and uh, choose the other option. So for option number two, all you need to do is once the button is clicked, you see these uh, corner widgets, the small rounded widgets, just click and drag inward and all the corners will be rounded. Okay, to the last part of today's session, we need to make copies of this rectangle along with the button. We'll need four or five copies to signify different parts of the web page that will eventually open different pages once linked. So first of all, since our rectangle is locked, click on the lock icon on the top left corner to unlock it and then drag to select both the rectangle and the button sitting inside it and holding shift and option on a Mac or shift and alt on a PC, drag it down to make copies. Once we have four or five copies, let's change the heading of the buttons. So I'm going to name them product gallery, quarterly performance and user reviews. At this point, it's not really important what we name them. We just need to have something there that makes sense in a web page setup. So if you guys want to name them differently, be my guest. All right. I think we've had enough XD for a day. So we're going to stop here. And uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and I shall see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.